This is simple Cantonese comfort food at its best. Stewed beef with intense flavors. Very simple recipe, but just so good. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. This particular stew is one of my favorites to order in restaurants, but it's also one of dude's father's favorites. And um, he likes it with tendon, which I totally don't like it with tendon. So if we ever eat out together and we both happen to order the same thing, I will just give him my tendon and he'd be happy as a clown. This is a daikon. It's also referred to as a white radish and it can be bitter. So what I'd like to do is blanch it a bit in uh, hot water before adding it to my stew. But first I'm gonna peel it. And you actually want to peel kind of twice because the outside of it is quite fibrous, but the inside is really tender and can be really sweet if done right. So I didn't know that I needed to blanch it until my mom and my grandma both told me that you need to boil it for a little bit on its own before adding it to your dishes because it'll take away that bitter taste. I'm like, oh, because otherwise, if it's bitter, it's just not good. So I don't know if you can tell, but you can see white and then not so white. So the white part is the fibrous stuff on the outside. So if you can get rid of that, that will just make your daikon more tender. I'm just gonna cut it up into about one inch rounds. Maybe one and a half inch. Yeah, that's like a, a weird inch measurement. <laughs> I'm cutting the daikon again in half, just into these larger chunks. And the reason why I'm keeping them in larger chunks is because I find that if I'm putting it all in the Instant Pot along with the beef and stewing it for a longer period of time that the vegetables get quite mushy. So if I cut them into quarters, they'll get really, really soft, like too soft too soon. So if I keep them in bigger chunks, they will keep its shape and be just the right texture when the beef is done. I have a pot of water boiling on the stove and I'm just gonna plop these in there for about five minutes. While the daikon is parboiling, I am preparing the rest of my ingredients and I have about two ounces of ginger. It is bigger than a bruised thumb. A bruised giant's thumb. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just slice it up and you can peel it if you want, but if you don't peel it, make sure that you wash it really, really well. Okay, and I have, well, I wanna say four to five large cloves of garlic. And we're going to just push these through the garlic press. See, so much faster than chopping. I have about two and a half pounds of beef brisket. I'm just gonna cut these into about one and a half inch pieces. And if you're not using brisket, you can also just use stew meat, which I don't like to use, or you can use short ribs. And another cut of meat that I recently found that would be really good in this, I think, is finger meat. Ew. <laughs> so if you've never heard of finger meat, apparently behind the ribs of uh, beef ribs, there is like this strip of meat that they're calling finger meat because it's so narrow and thin. And it's great, it's kind of like short rib. It's um, one of those cuts that require um, a long time, like a stewing meat. So yeah, it's great. I really like using that. And sometimes it's really cheap because people don't know what to do with finger meat. So if you ever see finger meat in the market, give it a try. They should really change the name of that cut. <laughs> So I'm just cubing them. I'm gonna to toss them straight into the Instant Pot. Of course you can make this over the stove, but it can take a couple of hours of simmering. So I'm just gonna throw it in the Instant Pot and it only requires about half an hour of cook time. So what are you gonna choose? 
So the rest of the ingredients are gonna go in while we continue to wait for our daikon to be ready. I'm using a quarter cup of Shaoxing wine. Shaoxing wine is just a rice wine. Sorry, I'm gonna measure first. Two, three, four. Four tablespoons is a quarter cup. If you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use any rice wine or well, not mirin. Mirin is a little bit sweet. So if you have another Chinese uh, rice wine or cooking sherry, it's a good substitute. We've tried bourbon in its place and bourbon is amazing in it. But not the good stuff. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. That might be a little bit more than two tablespoons. One tablespoon of dark soy. And dark soy does taste a little bit different from regular soy. Regular soy is um, much saltier than dark soy, and dark soy is a little bit more sweet. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. Using two tablespoons of chi hao paste. And that's how you spell it. And this is one of those sauces that I do buy because it just has a unique flavor that you're not going to get with ingredients that you would normally have at home. So I'm using two tablespoons of this. It's a little bit sweet. It's like a fermented soybean paste, I guess. One cinnamon stick, one lump of rock sugar, about a tablespoon. If you don't have rock sugar, you can just use a tablespoon of brown sugar. And two star anise. I'm at the very bottom of my package of star anise. So I'm gonna put the equivalent of two in there. Then your ginger, don't forget your ginger and your garlic. And the daikon is gonna go right on top. Okay, putting the lid on, locking it into place. Make sure that ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're gonna set it for high pressure for let's say 35 minutes, just to make sure that it's nice and tender. That's it, how easy was that? See you in a bit. It took 20 minutes to come up to pressure, 35 minutes to cook, about five minutes to release all the pressure. And I know some of you are probably wondering, does she have enough liquid in there? I do, look at all the sauce. Okay, we're gonna turn this on to saute mode. And I'm going to make a slurry because I wanna thicken the sauce, a cornstarch slurry. I think I'm going to start with a tablespoon of cornstarch. Adding room temperature or cold water, about a tablespoon. And dissolve the cornstarch. Remember to use room temperature or cold water because cornstarch will not dissolve otherwise. And as soon as it comes to simmer, Pour the cornstarch slurry in and stir. And if it's not enough, we're gonna add another, another um, portion of slurry. I want it to be a little bit thicker than that, so I'm gonna use another tablespoon. I should just trust my notes from last time. I did write down two tablespoons. Are you saying that you don't trust yourself? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, another tablespoon of cornstarch with another tablespoon of water. <laughs> it's not lunch, it's not dinner time. Adding the second portion of cornstarch. Just let that come to a simmer. Mm. It smells so the good. smells are so reminiscent. There we go. So you can see that the sauce has thickened. So you let it simmer for about a minute. I also cut up two green onions into two inch lengths. Toss that in there. 
Let it simmer for a minute. And that will be dinner. All right. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. Are y'all ready for? Yeah. The taste. Special guest appearance by Kaya. The older I get, the more I realize that I love the uh, old school flavors. And before, I guess when I was a kid, you loved the, you know, the, the lemon chicken, the, 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 uh, the ginger beef, like the, the big bowl flavors, but it must be a getting older thing that I'm beginning to like some of the flavors that my parents did. So as Flo mentioned, this is one of my dad's favorite things, the uh, beef brisket, but he likes the tenon, which is, I still think it's gross. No offense, Chinese people. When you did the quick release, the aroma was so reminiscent, so, so home style. I'm looking forward to this. I, I will, might want some too. Yeah, uh, but I will not be deterred or distracted, people. The job at hand is to taste this goodness. Oh, forgot to get some daikon. And this sauce is amazing on rice. You know what, people? It doesn't take much. Simple food with amazing flavors goes a long ways. I see steam, which means possible burnage. All right, here it goes. Wow. Mm. And when I bit into that beef, it was perfectly cooked in that the pressure cooker gets it to the right texture and it renders the fat so it's not blobby. Daikon is still maintaining its texture. The flavor is driven into the food. Daikon and the beef with the pressure cooking. Simple, but wow, you even get a hit of that garlic. So good. All right, thanks dude. Mm -hmm. You usually find this on a Chinese menu in the hot pot section. It comes out in a clay pot and it's just sizzling away. Oh, it's so good. But we also find this dish without the daikon on noodles, whether fried noodles or soup noodle. And this is served along with your noodles with a few vegetables. Oh, so, so good. For more homestyle recipes, check it out. I will see you over there.